Hey YouTubers, it's me, Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. And thank you for being my community. I really appreciate it. There's not very many people we can go to that um, understand that Fukushima is the most catastrophic event in the world. Um, and that what happened to me this weekend is most likely incited by what happened because of Fukushima. Uh, actually, the two events that have been caused me a lot of uh, sadness in the last few days is because of Fukushima and uh, this is why I want to talk to you about it because this is our reality and this is I mean uh, this has not been easy today my little nephew had his heart surgery I think I talked to you about that a month ago or so um, at first he wasn't breathing so they had to put something down his throat I guess to make him breathe but after a while he was okay and he woke up and said hey did I have the surgery so I guess he's all right. He's very weak. He's in the hospital still, um, but he made it through. Yay! <laughs> I knew he would. I can feel him. I he'll be he'll make it through the heart surgery. <laughs> now maybe not the everything else. What's about to happen to him? So God knows. But I was expecting to have videos posted this evening. Uh, on Tom Carpenter from Hamford Challenge and he was going to be at the Powell's Bookstore in Beaverton, Oregon which is about two hours away from me. It's in Portland. Beaverton's a sub city of Portland and I called around all my quote activist friends of course and nobody could go. Nobody could change their plans because I found out Friday and I wanted to go Saturday. But a friend of mine who is an acupuncturist said yeah well actually he said no at first to Tom Carpenter but he said yes when I told him it was Amy Goodman because <laughs> what I found out that uh, it wasn't Tom Carpenter being at Powell's books it was Amy Goodman in democracy now and Tom Carpenter Tom Carpenter was going to have a segment so I decided I was going to drive up there. My homework isn't that heavy this term. I mean, it is it. I have to mega study for the midterms to reread all these things that I'm reading, but I like to read. I always read anyway, so it's just a little heavier. During the term this year, we're averaging, I don't know, 150 pages a week, <laughs> which is more than I normally read. I don't normally read 150 pages a week. I normally poke around at like, 10 pages a day. You guys see how slow I read on my videos. Like, So anyways, uh, I'm having to power through it, which I'm doing good. I'm doing good in school. But um, anyways, Peter decided to go with me 35 minutes up on the way up there. Uh, we were talking about politics and things like that. And I made some remark about doctors, you know, my opinion of the AMA. And he was getting all animated, and then all of a sudden he looked at me and went, and you know what? And then he started like, blah, 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 like babbling. Uh, but he was talking, kind of babbling, talking. And I thought he was just basically telling me to shut up because I was talking too much. <laughs> so I beat quiet, but he was like looking at me after about a minute. Like, I knew what he was saying, and he was babbling. So then I realized, holy crap, he's having something's going wrong. His brain is not connecting. So I pulled off. It got worse. He basically came to a standstill like this, like, ah. I'm like, holy crap. I stopped the car in the middle of the exit because I'd gotten off, and thankfully nobody was behind us. It's out in the middle of the country. And uh, he was still breathing, so I parked the car, stopped the car down the road a little bit, and he was fine. He actually insisted on not going to the hospital, which I don't know if I regret that or not. That's a hard one, but he really did not want to go. In fact, he was mad at me because I wouldn't take him to Portland. <laughs> but what the hell? What the hell is that? He's 63 years old. I don't know what that is. A seizure of something. And my nephew having this heart surgery. 
And even fucking crazy psycho Trump, his fucking psychotic schizophrenia. You know, schizophrenia is caused by nuclear radioactivity. So, like, every time he gets in an airplane, he gets down, he, like, starts acting all wacko because there's radioactivity up there. For God's sakes. I don't know, you guys. I just had to share all this with you because this is what it means to live in the age of vision. The fucking dead fish. Are you guys going to that page, Mass Animal Deaths? Dead fish, I mean, along the East Coast, something bad. It's the fucking tritium coming out of Indian Point. It's getting into the bay there. I was looking on the map. The whales on the East Coast are dying. So many that they call it a catastrophic event. Mass, mass fish deaths. I mean, <laughs> this is the thing, I guess. You know, the things that we can do about it is get educated. We need people to be scientists. We need scientific brains, folks. If you have a liking for math, please become a scientist because we need scientists. We need people to think this through because, I don't know, it's catastrophic. It's very catastrophic. We could sing songs, protest songs. Yeah, singing makes you feel better. That's the good part about singing. Tapping makes you feel better. Here, we'll do some tapping. Ooh. Even though, here, we'll start here. Even though I feel super overwhelmed by all of this and like, we're super screwed. <laughs> Like, and nobody seems to be accountable and everybody seems to be ignoring it. And I forgive myself for not knowing about it sooner. That's a lot of it, is the guilt and the helplessness. I deeply and completely love, honor, approve, and accept myself. And we are not helpless. We have solutions. We allow the solutions to appear. We really allow the solutions to come into us and allow ourselves not to feel overwhelmed by it all. The challenges are great, but so are we. How about that? So, I'm just going to like decide that we're going to be happy. Happiness is resistance, and I'm happy to resist. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, that feels better. Even though I have these anxiety attacks, I deeply and completely love, honor, and approve of myself and everyone else who's watching this video. Yay! <laughs> okay, guys, that's what you guys should do when you have panic attacks. It sure made me feel better, but uh, it's not a panic attack. It's just anxiety. It's like we're overwhelmed. I came home from school today, like, shaking, just so overwhelmed because of this thing that's going on in St. Louis. Like, for fuck's sake, our country, at the heart of our country, St. Louis, Missouri, has a catastrophic event that they can't even fucking get right. For 18 years, the Army Corps of Engineers moved out 220,000 tons. How many people died in St. Louis from that radioactive contamination? Lots. Every family there that lived around it is affected. And that's the reality. There's not one family who's made it out unscathed in one way or another. Every family. And then they illegally from, they sold that, they fixed that. They thought they had fixed it pretty much. But then they discovered the Westlake landfill was on fire down the road. And so they finally get some legislation that looks like it might have some teeth. And the freaking Republicans put a poison pill in the legislation. 
so that if the legislation got passed and there were buyouts from these homes, um, discounting the fact that the people around there who stayed, their homes would be devastated economically. Uh, the fact that there were no longer residents around the fuse wrap site, the circular laws would be uh, able to be used to allow them to not continue to do any more remediation because it's considered an industrial site. So there was a lot of residents who opposed it because for the greater good, it was a bad bill. It was the only time that they got any kind of legislation closed. And the people in St. Louis are suffering and it's making them at each other's throats. And people are getting desperate and doing stupid things to each other. Why? Why? And we have the guy with the orange hair who all he wanted to do was make money with fucking Russia. He didn't intend to, like, be a traitor. <laughs> he just thought he was going to make money. And he has made money. That's the thing. He's been making money with the Russians for a long time. You know what my theory about him is that he's a CIA asset, though. That's how he has his Russian connections. The big thing is, is what they're doing to our government is they're gutting everything in our government. Everything. And that would be okay if they had a plan in place other than we're going to turn it loose to the corporations and let them fucking rape you. I don't know. God dang it, man. I feel like my skin is being torn off my body tonight. That's how I feel. I just feel like, arr, like you know, chalks on the nail, nails on the chalkboard. Arr. I posted up on Instagram a photo of my blue nails with my daughter. She had blue nails too. <laughs> oh my God, I love my kids. If you guys would know my kids, you would love them. They're awesome. My grandchildren are beautiful human beings. My daughters are great. Like, they're just good people. And I'm sure your families are good people. We do not deserve to die of pollution or nuclear war or, you know, like... The thing is, the younger generation feels defeated. They feel very defeated. I'm in these classes with these young kids, and they're all... Like, they just feel like no matter what they do, nothing changes. And that's their paradigm. See, they want us to believe that. That's the thing. We have to keep breaking through that because that's a false paradigm. It doesn't mean it's easy. Life gets better, but it doesn't get easier, right? I mean, it's never been easy to be human because being human is really just an illusion who we really are is more than this body more than this flesh more than these organs more than all of this stuff this is where we really connect is on the ethereal level on the level that we're not even you know aware of this is why like people hate the government like well the government doesn't have any value because it's just there to oppress us. Well, in some ways it is there to oppress us, but in other ways it's there to help keep order because we got lots of human beings. It's like the ant hill, you know. So this is the thing about our government or our supposed government prior to World War II and them deciding, fuck you, we're taking over. Uh, you know, we were building, we are building a democracy. And this is why it's imperative now if we want to, like, maintain any semblance of democracy that we pay attention to the details man it's outrageous oh my god okay i'm glad to see kevin blanche is up and around and back to his old vinegar self that for god's sake is a little bit comforting at least kevin isn't dead <laughs> oh my god that would have been, been that would have been really fucking freaked me out. Thank God Kevin didn't die. And I hope to God my little nephew doesn't die. And I hope Peter doesn't like die of a stroke in the middle of doing everything and him refusing to go see a doctor like he promised. 
He's like, I am a doctor. I'm like, well, don't self-diagnose. Go see somebody that you respect. I don't care. It doesn't have to be a Western medicine guy, but go see someone. Wow, you guys, I'm freaked out. You know how freaked out I am? I, my computer, that was the other thing. My computer fucking blanked out on me this morning at the radio show. Right before I got on, right before I got on the air, this stupid thing turned off automatically. And I had to get it, blah, 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 get it on. If anybody's listening to my radio show, you know exactly what happened. There was like a minute and a half of dead air. I was there. It just didn't happen. So then I got someone to fix my computer. But because of all that, I missed out on being on the Chuck O'Chelly show, which really pissed me off. I didn't mean to blow off Chuck O'Chelly and his millions of followers. He has, like, a lot of followers. They wanted to know about Hanford, which you guys should be watching my videos, uh, the YouTube channel for the Age of Fission radio show. Anytime you see Heidi Lampert on, she talks about Hanford. Mimi German, she's a Portland activist. She does lots of stuff. Heidi thinks that the Hanford is just a ploy to get money out of the new budget. She's like, they, they knew about this. This is just their latest thing. It's like whack-a-mole. Every time the budget comes around, they have some emergency, so they have to get a little bit more money. Anyways, that was an interesting theory. It does speak to why there's no sense of urgency. Dang, you guys. Well, I don't think we have a choice but to put our courage feet on and keep them there and keep leaning into it and pressing into it and deciding to be happy. You know, happiness is resistance, right? So <laughs> let's be happy. Let's resist. Let's resist the oppressive, like, EMF ways that make us want to be depressed. You know, fuckers. No, not going to happen. Life is too good. That's a beautiful thing to, you know, be able to, like, engage and look people in the eye when you go into the grocery store. Look your family in the eyes and hold them in your arms. Tell people that you really love them. Life is short. We can be bigger creatures, you know. So, ciao, you guys. Put your courage feet on, please. We need everybody. Bye.